Back again at the Alder Street Recreational Complex in Orangeville, Ontario for a Tuesday night OLA Junior B matchup as the McMaster Northmen entertain the Green Gales. Hello again, Lance Wynn, working alongside my usual partner in crime, Matt Marshallton. Thanks for allowing us into your home or wherever you happen to watch your lacrosse. Head coaches for the Green Gales, Jay Lee is the bench boss. Chris Tucker, not that Chris Tucker, is his assistant, Jeff Fernandez. Also helping out as is Trevor Sear. And for McMaster, Brandon Sanderson is the head coach. His assistants are now Caravello and Dustin Caravello. And with that said, these two teams come in. The McMaster Northmen 7-2, sitting first in the Southeast Division. The Green Gales 5-2-1, they sit first in the Mideast. And Matt, when we take a look at these two teams, boy, very evenly matched. Yeah, Coach uh, Brandon Sanderson said that it was a great game down there and a 10-9 win uh, last week. Um, he said both teams fought very hard and that they actually play pretty similar styles. Similar styles for sure. And once again, controlling off the draw, it's going to be Evan Brake and the Northmen that are going to get a first crack on offense. Brake will swing it around. Looking down low, it's Gordy Power. Power now surveys, trying to turn that corner. Wide turn, gets it back to Brake. Brake will swing it back out to the top. Marcelo Carrero, the team's leading point getter. And a sniper for outside. His shot stopped, but ball loose. And the Northmen battling for those loose balls. Green Gales right with them, though. A good effort, though, by Ethan Lee. And looks like we're going to have our first penalty of the game. And it's going to come against the Northmen. Well, after a good good work on protecting the ball there, uh, number 13 for Orange, or Marcelo Carrero, kind of got in a rock and a hard place there. The Green Gales guy picked it up, and he was off to the races, so the best thing to do is give him a little bear hug and try it five on four. Well, the last time these two teams played, it was a one-goal win for the Northmen, and I think one of the differences, uh, Coach, uh, sorry, Coach, uh, Jay Lee was saying five power play goals by Orangeville, so discipline a key here. And right off the bat, Northman will give the Green Gales a chance here on the power play. Heading that power play and sitting up top, of course, Carson Christie, their leading scorer. And got to hurry, five on the shot clock. And just going to get lofted right into the basket and of course, we need to mention Lucas Johnston in the net for the Northmen. 4-1 and one record, his goals against 8.51. And at the other end, it's Craig Johansson. He's 3-1, and one. his goals against 7.16. So not too bad. Both goalies solid between the pipes. Yeah, every game we've seen here at home has been pretty good goaltending from both squads. So we're looking for more of that here tonight. Speaking of which, Johansson. Smothers that one, and he'll send the Green Gales away. And it'll be Christie with just under a minute to go in their first power play, working out there alongside Cole Tucker as well on that left shooter spot. Work it around. Everyone gets a touch. Kick it back out. Christie, no look skip. Kick it back into the middle. Good job to get it out. Dump it down. Shot from that right shooter spot. A good one from Christie, but a better save from Johnston. And here come the Northmen in transition. Liam Stadnick, what a save. Boy, oh boy, Johansson got that basket up. And now Gordy Power is going to work some clock. 15 seconds left. He loses it. Here come the Green Gales. Don't have numbers. They'll pull it back out. And they'll make wholesale changes in the final 10 seconds of this power play. Christie had a notion. Good fake. Kick it back. Duck in and a shot just wide. That shot from Alex Hicks. And Northman now going to try to counter. Three on one in transition. Break. Takes the shot. Steer to side again. Johansson. Ball loose. Good job by Owen Taylor, had it, lost it, and now almost regained control. Luckily, Johansson there to back him up, and a good outlet pass to Christie. They'll move it up. Well, Coach Niall Car or sorry, excuse me, Coach Justin Caravello said that they really wanted to push transition today, and we've seen a couple of runs up the floor by the Northmen here, and it looks like that's the game plan for tonight. Well, we like that, Matt. That's like old school lacrosse, up, down, off, and... You know, sometimes you got to give the defensive players a chance. Can't have the offensive guys getting all the glory. So 
Good to help them contribute. There's some transition right here with some numbers. Connor Costigan, his shot blocked. Good defense by the Green Gales. Ball loose. Working the body, Ty Van Wart couldn't come away with it. Taking it strong, though, and Ethan Lee and a late hit will keep possession right here. Well, that's two fast breaks by Orangeville where they've had numbers and, and the initial ball carrier has decided to shoot the ball. I wonder if the bench maybe is asking those guys to maybe take a look and let the ball do some work as well. Well, what would you say, Matt, because being our resident expert, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm always the guy that's like, if there's a guy ahead of you, pass the ball. I mean, it's easy. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you want to, you know, it's not. Well, opening the scoring, Colton McNutt with a good overhand bounce shot. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, looks like the Green Gales are just kind of getting some five-on-five five stuff going here. Just a, a classic cut through the middle. Um, the Northman player can't close the gap on the Green Gales quick enough, and it's one nothing Green Gales here early. McNutt with his sixth goal of the season, first here today, and a one nothing lead, and off the draw. Green Gales gobble up that loose ball. They'll move it up into the offensive end. Ty Hattie, job well done. He'll retreat, and he'll give way now to Hicks. Hicks trying to weave his way in, has it pop out of his pocket. Ball's still loose. Battle for it. Good job there by Graydon Stokes. Stokes, one of the top defenders on this McMaster team, and legging it over the timeline is Connor Pierce. He'll give way now, and it's Cade Cordingly. I believe both Cordingleys were missing for the last game where they managed to beat Brampton 15-9. Yeah, Coach, uh, Coach Caravello was telling me how the, a lot of the Junior Bs were up filling spots for the Junior As as they got their season started. And the Junior C team in Orangeville here, yes, we have all three, uh, ended up filling some spots for the Junior Bs to get that big win. So really cool that uh, we have three junior teams here in town and they can all help each other. Well, I tell you, Matt, that of course with, and, and, and talking to the coaches before, their biggest challenge is kind of the unknown, right? Who's going to be there? Talking to, to, to the head coach of um, Jay Lee, he said this is the first game where a majority of their roster is actually here. Yeah, and, and we're almost midway through the season. Right, and the Gales feed into the Whippy Warriors Junior A Club too, right? So it, it's difficult when you're not the primary lacrosse team. It's bittersweet, and here we have a break. Oh, missed it. It's, it's a bit bittersweet because, you know, you, you develop these players. Oh, what a save. Chance there, but what a save by Johansson. Carry yeah, on, carry yeah, on. Yeah, you, you develop those players, and they become your best players, and you lean on them, but they become so good under you that then the junior A's kind of need spots to fill throughout the year, and sometimes you lose your best players halfway, even three-quarters of the way through the season. So it's always a grind to get your final roster and set, and after those rosters are set, it's always a little bit of peace that you know who you have moving forward into playoff time. Yeah, there's certainly that challenge, and there are many – Young men at this age, along with other distractions, there could be work commitments, school commitments, um, hockey trial commitments, different different things that would uh, tie up their time. Right. So both hat, are, both hats off to the coaches for, yeah, for that. Yeah, and, and they got to make it work, and it's a, sometimes it's a daily struggle. But uh, both junior and junior B and junior A clubs always have guys waiting to get back from school. So, Second power play of the game for the Green Gales. And once again, they'll give everyone a touch. Christie will quarterback it one more time. Working on that left shooter spot is Cole Tucker. Christie now, they'll work it back right side. Skip pass. Looking for the opening. Double skip. Good save, Johnston, as he slid over there perfectly to cover that angle. Ball loose in the corner. Battling for it. Green Gales had it, lost it. Northman had it, lost it. And it's going to trickle over the center line and into the Gales defensive end. And a little too hands-on was yeah. Ty Tobel. Yeah, all the way down from your, all the way as far as you can get pretty much from your own net. And the shot clock so low, that's a tough one to take for the Northman. It is, but sometimes you can't, can't fault the guy for trying for sure. Christy now trying to inch his way inside that dotted half circle. They keep it well on the outside. Uh, Max Taylor on that right shooter spot. No interchange. Christie! That was a deadly underhand in the low corner. 
Yeah, leading scorer for the Gales, uh, Carson Christie. Looks like he's got a pretty solid stick here. And this is nothing fancy here. It's just a little passing catch with his right shooter, and he's able to step in from really far outside. The Northern defender actually does a pretty good job of getting out to him that far, but he's pretty fine with the, uh, with the shot on the inside corner there. Good defense, just better offense. That's Carson Christie's first of the game. He's got 17 in the season to go along with 17 helpers. So it'll be interesting to see now. Northman need to respond. They haven't spent a lot of time in the offensive end. And well, only, of course uh, that discipline. Yeah, seven and, know, and a half minutes in and they've already had four minutes in penalties, right? So they've played half this period so far shorthanded. So we'll see how this five on five goes. They've only surrendered one power play goal. The rest was a full strength marker and it's a two nothing lead for the visitors. They'll reset here on offense now. Filtering out late, Colton McNutt has a one of their two. Looking for the give and go inside. Trying to power his way in is John McKinney. He loses it, and here come the Northmen. Toval swinging around. Stokes kick it. Good shot, but wrong stick side for Colin Thompson. So minimal angle. And the Green Gales now leaving a trail of destruction behind. Have the numbers, but a bad pass. And a good job by Stokes to use his length to come down with that and bail his team out. That could have got pretty hairy there. The Green Gales had some numbers. And now a chance for the Northmen to go to work on offense. Carrero. And a delayed penalty coming to the Green Gales. Carrero shot steered aside. Ball loose. Picked up and it's going to be a slashing call. And the Northmen are going to get a chance. Now, if I'm correct here, he, he comes up to try. The Northmen player tries to set a pick, and I believe the Gales guy grabs onto him. Oh, uh, no, actually, uh, the Northmen player just shoved him right down to the ground. So, um, Oh, maybe he did get the hold. He did get the hold. Oh, he that did was get the, the hold. Call, I thought so. it was the Northman who got the penalty there. My bad. ready to pack it in, and that's it. And I don't <sighs> I'm take all fired up. I'm ready to say another know, penalty. Jeez. <laughs> Must be my only, only my fourth time doing this or something. <laughs> Rocky power play to work here for the Northman there. First look. Ty Van Ward at the top, and accordingly shot. Stopped, and that's a back-in call. We'll give possession right back to the Northman. Accordingly, he'll swing it around. Van Wart, Carrero in that right shooter spot. Underhand wide of the mark. Ball loose in the dot half circle. Picked up Green Gales. Trouble though. Collapsing. Good job by Dylan Cordingly as he got a stick on the stick. Forced a turnover. And now a fresh 30 to work with. Van Wart, pressure, accordingly, no look. Carrero, swing back, working it to that left side. Had a notion, breakdown on that crease. Accordingly shot. That doesn't find the way. Does pick up the carom. No reset. Eight on the shot clock. Skip pass. Canelo, right on, right on target by Dylan Cordingly. Another back-in call. Gives possession to the Northman just under a minute to go in the power play. Yeah. So, chance after chance. Yeah, this is a killer for the Gales short man team here. Um, they've got to be exhausted with all the ball movement going on, and the Northman need to do a really good job at getting a cleaner look here. They haven't got one yet. Swinging around, they got breakdown on that crease along with Cordingly on that right crease. And... That box really compact in by the Green Gales, and that knocking that stick away is going to cost the Northmen what little time down the power play. In transition, bounce shot. Good save, Johnston. And I tell you, the Northmen not helping their own cause at all. Well, one of the things that they wanted to do was stay disciplined here tonight, and I think uh, they're going to have to regroup here shortly if they're going to stay out of the box a little bit more than they have. Well, Dylan Cordingly, the guilty party, he's got to ride home with his dad, so good luck with that. I'm sure he'll have something to say. <laughs> yeah, the Northman power play, just it just seems like they're passing it around the outside. I think they need to get either run a play or get some straight-up cuts or whatever because that, that little box is, is really holding well, tight the in Green there. Well, the Gales know they've got a good goalie, so they compact that in and force the outside shots, assuming that Johansson's going to make that save, and he, he's done just that up to this point. 
Coach Brandon Sanderson might have to encourage his boys to start bombing from the outside like he did many moons ago. I think that might be the case. Hicks can't find the net. Six on the shot clock. Northmen are going to come up with it. And it's Nick Devins. He's going to leg some time here as they're going to look to burn some clock. Just under a minute and a half to go in the man short. Break. So Evan Brake out there with Gordy Power, two guys that are instrumental on offense as well as defense. Brake looking to kick it over. He's going to keep it. Six on the shot clock. Going to draw a crowd. Brake trying to turn the corner. Swims back around. And he kills the 30 seconds. So a good job by Evan Brake. And now the Green Gales will get a chance with just under a minute to go in this man advantage. Robbie McGraney out there. And Christie at the top. Kick it back over. Cole Tucker manning that left shooter spot. Takes the pass. Slides over. Skip. Read perfectly by Stokes. Stokes with one man to beat. It's Christie. Stokes long strides. Wrong stick side. But a good save by Johansson. And that power play is going to be nullified in its final 30 seconds with a too many men call. It's been a pretty steady uh, flow to the box here for now, both teams. As you can see, Stokes does a great job, just that big stride of his getting down the floor, getting a decent shot, and forcing the Gales to get an extra guy out early. And now we're four on four for 30 well, with, seconds. With those strides, he, he's moving quicker than he looks. Yes, right? he is. Like well, big he, men don't look fast when they are fast. <laughs> very true. Very, uh, listen, I, I don't know from experience, <laughs> just from seeing, right? But... <laughs> So four on four for just under 30 seconds. And Carrera now looking for an opening, gets a screen from Power, looking for the roll, has it knocked down. Picked up though, good job by Van Wart. Van Wart now sees an opening, goes underhand, that goes off the defender. And out of play, that will, possession will stay right here with the Northmen. 14 yeah. seconds left. Great pick and roll there between um, number 13, Marcelo Carrero. And number 15, uh, Gordy Power there. Great pick and roll, but um, young Marcelo Carrero needs to keep his feet moving on that dump pass. As soon as the pick and roll was available, he stops moving his feet and tries to jackknife a little floater in there. If he keeps an extra step or two, he takes away that stick in the lane, and we might have a scoring opportunity here. So Green Gales with possession. And dipping the arm, leaning in is Cam Beckett. Beckett, a big body, rolls off one defender. Still has it, gets double teamed on the boards and loses it. The other way, Connor Costigan has numbers. Had Cordingly just out of the box late, wrong stick side. Cordingly battling for it hard. That's a handball, they're going to call that. And possession to the Northmen. So a good job by Cordingly coming out of the box and jumping on that loose ball. Tough trying to run a fast break when you got two guys on the wrong side. But uh, you try to get that to the middle guy if you can and, and even crisscross underneath to try to make something happen. Well, with a goalie like Johansson, it's going to be tough to score on your wrong stick side. So important that you be there accordingly. No look. Power tucks in. Another good save. So good execution on offense. Just a better save from Johansson. And now the Green Gales working with a minute left to kill. Bouncing off a couple was Max Taylor. Picks it back up. Taylor taking a beating. Still has it. And finally loses it with eight seconds on the shot clock. So a job well done. Evan Brake had to be aware of that. And made that look easy as Carrero now will set it up. Has accordingly power in the shooter spot. You see Evan Brake now has shifted to that left shooter spot. Carrero back at the top. I think this is their strongest lineup offensively gives their good shooters a chance to shoot right but uh, I don't know why they've just gone back to this umbrella pass around the outside that first chance they had they had lots of movement guys cutting let's see if they can get back to this good pocket pick from accordingly power and one good play deserves a not so good play interference call nullifies that chance and it'll be Green Gales ball with under six and a half to go here so I'm sure both coaches would like to see things a little tighter, but the Green Gales coming in here. 
And oh. that's going to be an illegal cross check, I guess, as official Matt Chamois. Well, I don't know. Hopefully, we get another look at this here. Let's just see how he goes in the corner. The double team comes, and it comes with authority. Um, he turns him down. Number 18 turns him down. 27 comes through, and oh, yep, yep. I thought he had turned around, and he got him across the crest, but he hadn't turned around yet, and unfortunately got him on the numbers there for a hit from behind. Excellent job by our crack camera team because they got a good angle of that. And you're right. I initially thought the hit was clean until mm -hmm. I seen the, the other one. And He was on his way to turning around, but... Uh, Number and 18 Nick Devins on the was one. gone. He was gone to the bench already. Nick Devins was ready to have <laughs> a drink. Sure. He wasn't even going to bother with that, <laughs> hoping it would blow over. <laughs> but, uh, so fourth power play opportunity for the Green Gales. They are one for three. That underhand from Christie rings the pipe, but that's it. So a fresh clock here. Northman goalie might want to take note of that. He put that on the same side as he did when he scored earlier this game. Quick turnover gives it back to the Northman. Going for a bit of a run is Stadnik. Stadnik fakes, goes around a defender, and that could have been a call, and it is. So a good job by Liam Stadnik to nullify that man short situation with some good offense of his own. Yeah, Stadnik just makes a hard move here. He gets the ball high. He knows he can get a step. There's a big gap there underneath. He shows pass across and just takes that cross step. And unfortunately, the uh, number 14 defender for the Green Gales has to put a stick on him and take him down and forces a penalty. Great job by Stadnik. Jacob McLean in the box. So that was a short-lived power play. We'll play four on four for just under a minute and a half. Power, looking for a screen, gets one from Carrero. Looking to break, Evan break. Gets a move, gets a step, break. Another good save and we're not sure if he got in there, but Power's in the middle of it. And break definitely made contact. Power now fully involved. I'd like to tell you who Power's going with. Can't see a jersey because there isn't one on. Well, I think that's just a good old-fashioned scrap there. If you have it, that's just what it was. A couple of and guys look like they know what they're doing. Yeah. A little respect there at the end. Both probably really, really, really tired, I would imagine. <laughs> but again, you know, the Northmen have done a great job all year sticking up for each other, and that's no different. We had um, Evan Brake come across and made a hard move across the top of the crease there and just got dusted across the crease by the... Uh, uh, by the Gales defender, and um, his teammate came to his aid. I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with that. Here's watch the play again. Here it comes on the replay. So break goes underneath here, comes charging across, and number 12 just takes a run right at him. And, uh, you know, that's just good hard play. And was it 12 who he actually fought? Well, we don't know because the jersey was up, flipped, and then tossed before right. we knew it. We'll have to. It looked like the same guy, but I'm not sure. Um, either way. Both teams were ready to answer well, the bell when they needed to. Well, you know what, Matt? When you, you get into a situation like that, I think it's important that as, as a team, you you know that your teammate's going to back you. And yes. in a situation like that, you saw Brake got up, didn't have any hostility towards the goalie because he knew he got hit to, but good on Gordy Power to come to his, his teammates' aid just to let the Green Gales know that that's not the way you handle any of our guys. So right, and, and just how he did it, there was no thought. It was just my guy got smoked. And I got to get in there and do something about it. And I mean, you know, fighting is a kind of on its way out, I guess, in these sports and things like that. But when you see one of your best buddies that you, you know, hang out with four or five times a week, practices, games, team outings, things like that, um, I don't think anyone wants to see their friend get hit like that. So it, it makes sense that you would step in and do something about it. Well, I won't lie. I've never been an advocate of fighting, honestly, mm -hmm. just based on the fact that, you know, you're, you're talking about the possibility of maybe ending someone's career with a with a punch but there are times during a game in contact sports where there's just the the the, the intensity and the adrenaline just get to the point where you got to figure you know what sometimes that's just the best way to settle it right is 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 one on one and oh so the extra the 5 is going to go to Brody Strong. Yeah, and that would be for the initial hit yeah, so on break there. That's the case, and 
That's the one up on the board that stands out. So I think the others are will be the the, the, the fighting wash. The five extra is going to be for the hit, I believe, on break into the goalie. And I believe nowadays in junior lacrosse, if you fight, you're out for the game, right? I'm pretty sure that's how things work these days. I think we've checked in with our resident statistician, and apparently, yes, you are correct. So we got a resident statistician, a resident expert, <laughs> an outstanding camera crew. I mean, I don't know what else you guys need. <laughs> Running like a pretty well oiled we machine Maddie over green here. Green eyes here, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> green gills, yeah. Green, green, green. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what this four on three does here for the Orangeville Northman. I mean, so I having a big opportunity here to get a couple on this five minute major. Let's see what they can do to claw back in this one. So, two in the box, four on three here. So it looks like they're going with a with a inverted triangle. Good move and no look pass, but should have taken a shot. Ty Van Wart. Ball loose again. Carrero can't corral it. And here come the Green Gales. Ethan Lee. He's going to weave through a couple defenders. Try to burn some clock here. He's got lots of time to burn. Good swim move. Splits two. Ducks in. Plenty of time. 15 on the shot clock. Lee's just going to wait. Carrero's going to have to put some pressure on him. Got to be careful not to get another penalty as that bounce shot looked like a guy who just legged a lot of time killing a penalty there. And it's back to the Northmen heading the other way to go to work now with the man advantage. Let's see if they go right back to this double up pick from the crease guys to force that two on one. No look to the top, swing around accordingly, looking down low. Different look offense here on this second power play unit. Ducking in, what a save by Johansson. As Leighton Cook, point blank, was sniffing that far corner and that sure got shut down in a hurry. Legging it over the timeline. Aiden Urbeck. He's gonna draw a crowd. So penalty over for the Northmen now and they're gonna have a five on three for 25 seconds. Great job there, five on the shot clock. So a job well done by Urbeck. And now the Northmen with under four minutes to go here in the first. It'll we'll be interesting to see what the Northmen do here, whether they hold it for the 10 seconds and go, or they go right away here to try to get one Accordingly quick. and accordingly out there. Carrero's out there as well, as is Van Wart. And cover the box. Good. Guy's coming out of the box here. And you called that outlet pass Johansson. Tough short hop. Good job to play that one nicely by Jacob McLean. And there's just crying. I'm not quite sure what the Greengales bench is. I think they're talking about too many men on the floor, but no call there. And you can see Coach Jay Lee not too pleased. So just about a two and 245 now. A power play, break at the top. Van Ward on that left side with Cordingly. Right side has Carrero and Dylan Cordingly. And just not looking very sharp here. The Northman is that shot right on. Carrero's got the best shot on the team. He's only taken two shots and they've just been in the dying seconds of the shot clock. Yeah, and not much going on with the power play tonight. Uh, they've had a couple of glimmers of hope. But for the most part, pretty stagnant. Chance for Christie. He missed the net. And now Evan Brake will slow things down. Just over two minutes to go in the power play. Northman still looking for their first goal of this game. Going to have to try some different combinations, some different angles. Johansson's been solid between the pipes. He covers a lot of space. Carrero goes to the other hand. Break. Almost had that rebound, but a good job. And then some good pressure from Noah Simpson as he knew the shot clock was winding down. And the Green Gales now in the offensive end. Trying to kill some more time. Hicks 
going for a bit of a run. Kicks it back out. They swing it around, and it's Drimmy. Matt Drimmy, half boards, left side. Eight on the shot clock. Three defenders, just lets that go. Rebound glides right to no one. And shot clock violation. Northman now back to work. Just over a minute and a half. Go a long way if the Northmen were able to pocket one here and cut this deficit in half before the end of the first. Carrero in that right shooter spot. He'll interchange. He's got some room. Carrero with the bullet. What you need, a little room. That's your guy, leading scorer on the team, and it's 2-1. Well, just a, a super old-school classic play. Um, you know, work it around a little bit. We got a big seal across the top here, so number 13 can step into one right from the dotted line. And nice overhand, right side of the net. Goalie didn't have much chance on that one. Well, good to see him make the adjustment. His last shot was an underhand. That was, was over the net and does a good job to settle in. But he's their team's leading point getter. That's his 18th goal of the season. And it was just a matter of time before he got on track and a good time to cut that deficit now to 2-1. Yeah, and now they have almost an entire minute to try to get another goal on that five-minute major as it takes two goals to erase a five-minute major. Well, it's almost, uh, well, this is the bonus part. This is the gravy chance yeah, now. It's the bonus round. seconds, right? <laughs> so, and off the draw, Stokes does a good job. Gets that loose ball, looking for some assistance now. And he will. He'll retreat to the bench, and they'll filter out a couple of offensive players in Van Wart and accordingly. Carrero now. He'll go back to that right shooter spot and they'll work the two-man game. Accordingly flies through that middle trying to cause a distraction. Carrero sets it. Shot by Van Wart. Stopped by Johansson. Seems like if he can see it, he'll stop it. And that pass dangerous. Green Gales though. Tough low shot. Bounce pass. But a good job to run under it by Simpson. And dump it over. Chance here for the Green Gales bounce shot. Just too much on it. On a good chance from Ethan Lee. Break. As we're into the final 25 seconds. Penalty over now. Teams back to full strength. Flip over. And settling things down is Landon Petter. Petter will give way to Van Ward. Van Wart looking to kick it back out. Swings it around Van Petter. Looking for Carrero. Carrero has room. Goes to the sidearm and almost got that five hole. Move the stick of Johansson, but he stood steady and made the save. And that's going to do it. Opening period in the books. Two to one. Favor of the visitors. We'll be back with the second period after this. Business? Having issues getting your products on time and seeing your prices skyrocket? Ontario Packaging and Distribution Centers is here to help. Ontario Packaging is helping Dufferin businesses save time and money with over 2 million products available. Ontario's one-stop shop for everything you need to run a business, warehouse, or restaurant here in Dufferin. Want to put your company logo on your boxes, tapes, or poly bags? Just give them a call. From packaging and shipping supplies, boxes to bubble wrap, to janitorial, and their new full apparel catalog, OPC really has it all. Over 2 million products in stock. See the difference hometown shopping makes at Ontario Packaging Centers. Supporting our local community from 70 Centennial Road, Unit 3, Orangeville.
Hello and welcome back to the Alder Street Recreational Complex. Pardon my allergies. Lance went alongside Matt Marshall. <laughs> Glad to have you with us. And Matt, as we take a look at that period, two to one, and penalties, penalties, and more penalties. Yeah, and because of all those penalties, it's a bit odd that it's only two to one. Either the, the power plays aren't going on all gears, or maybe the short man and the goalies have just been playing out of their minds. I'm not sure which one's which. Off the draw, Green Gales control, so they'll get a first sniff here on offense here in this second period, and they'll set it up with Christie. Christie will work it to the half boards, get it back, swing it around. Good movement by the Green Gales, looking for an opening. Ill-advised backhanded pass, of course, as soon as I said that by Colton McNutt. And now the Northmen will look to move it up, and it's Stokes. Accordingly, he'll pull it out, survey. Tight man-on-man -man defense by the Green Gales. And the Northman will swing it around accordingly, looking for the give-and-go. Gone and went, no call, late hit. Carrero picks up that loose ball. Six on the shot clock. Accordingly, lets it go, right on target. Good save, Johansson. Rebound, Carrero was looking for accordingly. And Kay accordingly now one-on-one. -on -one. Tries to duck his way in, thinks better of it. Good defense by the Green Gales on the rotation. Cordero, Carrero, sorry, looking for an open. Has a man in accordingly and almost snuck that one by Johansson. But he reached back with the glove and kept it from going over the goal line. And not looking for it. And I tell you, Matt, who used to say, Many years ago, you pass the guy the ball, whether he can catch it or not, whether he's looking or not, because if it hits him in the head, he'll know and it won't happen again. And he should have caught it if it hits him in the head. That's what we say as break now. Good spin move. Didn't go much. Looking inside, good interior pass, but Leighton Cook wasn't able to find the net, and Green Gales now with numbers. Streaming down the middle. Good pass, and a good save by Johnston. So robbed was Ethan Lee. Lee now gets it back. So both netminders have been steady between the iron pipes here in this game. Christie dumps it back. That one point blank. Connor Pierce, sorry, Max Taylor. And Johnston made that one look easy. Stokes overran it. Picked up now a chance here for the Northmen. Connor Castigan buries it. So a big goal transition ties this game at two. Well, let's see pressing gear here. Picks up a loose ball in his own end and gets a good heads up play. Passes it up perfectly to Costigan. And Costigan does a great job and faking short side and oh, brings it back. Twister, nice job on the short side there. And nice I'm, job, a little bit of a twister there. Yeah, yeah, it looked really good. And maybe the kid that threw it up to him will get some black gloves instead of the red ones he's wearing out there. <laughs> See if uh, Coach Brandon Sanderson can get off his wallet for that. <laughs> Listen, I'm staying out of that, all right? That's Matt, all Matt, <laughs> not, not, nothing to do with me, Coach. Okay, Green Gales now tie game here, so the Northmen have done a good job to battle back. And now they'll get it over the timeline with a chance here to go to work on O. Accordingly, in tight, accordingly, buries it. Boy, that's not the first time accordingly has buried something around the crease. Well, just a great opening three minutes here for the Northman, and accordingly just comes flashing off the bench with all sorts of speed. He gets to the front of the net. That's not easy to do as a young man. You catch it, you're, you might want to take that sharp angle, but he takes that extra step across the top of the crease to give him all four corners, and he brings it back, and again, short side on number 31 for the Gales. Okay, accordingly with his sixth goal of the season. And three unanswered by the Northmen have given him that one goal lead. So I think maybe the secret and the adjustment made by Coach Sanderson got to get it in tighter. That hence the reason the Green Gales were compacting it in, forcing the shots from outside. Johansson was solid once it got in a little tighter, a little different story. Yeah, they got inside here with two really good transition plays, and they're going to try it again here right now. Oh, Aaron pass. Stokes had that pass go high, but Van Wart tracked it down. 
He'll keep it on the left side. It's break, one on one. Looking for some room. Kicks it back out, swinging around Carrero. Carrero trying to duck in, sets up, back to break. Breaks overhand, finds the mark. So a bit of a chink in the armor from Johansson, and Evan Break finds the back of the net. Yeah, just, just some regular ball movement here, some picks, some rolls, and Break gets a pass across from the top, and he finds a little soft area here with that little up pick, and he shoots around a nice screen, body screen there, and somehow squeezed past the big wood stick of the Gales goalie. Excellent job by Brake. That's his 12th of the season, but using the defender as a bit of a screen there and putting we that. We used to practice that when I was coaching Junior B, actually shooting around screens, and we would have the uh, second goalie come out around the dotted line, and we would have practice receiving a pass and coming across and reaching around the goalie for those screenshots. They See, we great. did that too, but the guy usually standing there wasn't a willing participant. <laughs> no. So that made, that made it a little challenging at times. That's why we threw the goalie in there. He got the most equipment on it. <laughs> That's right. Loose and almost picked up, but nothing doing there as Matt Jimmy tried to flip that in the crease to himself. Northman now on a roll here, four unanswered. And you could see Coach Sanderson saying, if we stay out of the penalty box and play five on five, different game. Accordingly, he'll curl back out, gets knocked down, gets up, works his way in, bounces back out. Swings it around to the other accordingly. He'll go for the flip. Good quick shot, and you talk about finishing late and Cook on the money. Yeah, another shot that I think squeezes through the five hole between the, the leg pad and the cat gut side of the stick. If you look on your screen, the cat gut side's on the right-hand side of the goalie stick. And again, the Northman doing a really good job working inside out and getting these outside shots and making them count. Yep, it just somehow squeezed through there. I don't know, he had squeezed down on it. He didn't want that same goal as last time, but it somehow found a way to the back of the net, and the Northman are rolling here with a 5-2 lead in the second. Well, they seem to have found that spot between the wickets. And off the draw, Greengale's trying to counter. Wrong stick side, Twister Johnston, good save, and that's what you want from your goalie. Your team scores, big save at the other end. Give your team a chance now on O. Stokes dumps it off. Nothing doing there, couldn't connect with Colin Thompson. And the Greengales now will move it up into the offensive end. So different story offensively for the Northmen here in this second period. Christie, and he's been awfully quiet. That's their number one guy, and looking long in the basket, Stokes goes to the bounce, wide of the mark. Rebound will carry him almost back into the other end. Good job, and good hustle. Couldn't get his footing, though, was Taylor. And good job by Gear to come up with that loose ball. Last period, of course, Shots on goal were 18-8 in favor of the Northmen. And they have come out flying here in the second. Christie's shot right on and an easy save for Johnston. I apologize, not Christie. That was Cole Tucker. And... In some trouble is Stadnick, but he does a good job to use his speed. Has a chance here and has it knocked out of his stick. So a good late check there. From Dale Faubert. And now the Green Gales haven't spent a whole lot of time offensively. Christie in tight, wide of the mark. So almost on cue. Christie showed up and a good job by Castigan to battle and get that loose ball. Moves it up to Stokes. Stokes will curl back. And he'll retreat to the bench. Offense now will set up for the Northmen. Just over 13 and a half to go. Accordingly, half boards left side looking for the dump off. Had it pop out of his pocket. Closed it up. Good flip up ahead from Taylor. And ball still loose and souvenir into the crowd. Well, it's been very, very back and forth here the last few minutes. And whether it be turnovers or saves or guys running or strips or whatever the case may be, the ball has changed hands an obscene amount of times. And that's tiring for both teams. So this next goal is probably going to go right to the legs of whatever team is able to capitalize next. 
want to apologize to official Matt Van Giesen as I called him Matty Shamwa, and I'm sure he'll be upset about that, but hey, it's all good. Green Gales trying to dodge away, get a good screen on the roll. Bouncing off one was McNutt. And loose ball, there's going to be penalty on a high sticking call, and it's going to go to the Northmen. Yeah, Ty Tovel is doing a great job on defense here, but anytime you're the head of your stick is flips a guy's helmet up like this right here. Oh, he gets a punch up there. I thought it was just a stick, but yeah. His, his bottom hand gets up there, hits him in the face, head kicks back. That's a penalty every time. So let me get this straight. You're not allowed to punch anyone in the mouth. Well, not usually. Okay. But we'll see at playoff time. Go on to see here. Christie at the top. One for four with the man advantage are the Green Gales. And Christie now zips it across. Good skip. Cutter in the middle. Point blank. Johnston. Big save as Robbie McGraney had a chance. And trying to take advantage of it looks like Bit of an injury in Cole Tucker. He is hobbling, but he looks like he's going to stay out there in this power play. And Christie now will work it to the right side. Hicks at that right shooter spot, down on the crease. McGrain, I believe it's McGrady. And that backhand attempt was blocked, so Good job on the scouting report now. On the move is Thompson. Thompson, switch hands. Thompson scores! How about that shorthanded marker from Colin Thompson? Well, it can't get any better for the Northmen right now. It's been a great period so far, and now they're able to pick up a, a loose ball, and, and Connor makes a great move there to get over top of his defender. He gets his hands free, and there's nothing much the defender can do about that, and just sneaks it underneath the pad short side on the Gales goaltender. What a job by Colin Thompson. So first shorthanded marker surrendered in this game, and it's surrendered by the Green Gales. And we've got another veteran move here by the Gales goalie. You know, the last time he got scored on, he took a nice long stroll up to the bench to get himself a drink. He's thirsty, and he had a nice long stroll back, settle these guys down, try to break any momentum that he can. As you can see, he's not moving too quick back to his net, giving these guys a breather, and hopefully they can regroup. Well, well, we we seen your ads to take more breaks than a city worker, because I tell you, he's been back and forth of that bench, man. Oh man, he got to be in the union. Green Gales looking for a pass. Christie robbed by Johnston. So Johnston doing his part to keep the two a two, and a chance now for the Northmen. Still short, 35 seconds. Carrero. He's going to get chased around as there's 13 on the shot clock. Gets a screen. And it's break. Break. Tried to go five hole. Not this time. Johansson had the big basket right there. And the Green Gales now counter the other way with just 10 seconds left in the man advantage. See if they try to capitalize here. Christie flows out into that top spot. They'll work it around, zip it around quick. Skip pass, not a good one. Rebound corralled, and that's gonna be a crease ball. Good piece of officiating there. And now the Northmen have killed that penalty, and they'll work it up into the offensive end. We're at the 11 minute mark, period number two. Accordingly, we'll slide it on over to Kreller, Mason Kreller. Steps in the one! Oh, my, my! That was a pellet! Well, it just starts with a nice little pick and roll here. Now, some may say that 24 for the Northman here maybe sets an illegal pick, but it kind of looks like the defender kind of slips a little bit, and what a rocket overhand shot by the Northman player. Makes no mistake, right under the bar. I think that's a goal in any league, and we're going to have a goaltender change for the Green Gales here with 10.51 so like left in the second. Garrett Thompson's going to come in. Mason Kreller, just his third goal of the season. But, man, yeah, I don't know. You keeping that canning uh, hidden or what's going on? He should have a few more than that as he certainly let that one go. And so Craig Johansson had an outstanding start, but not the best finish. Seven unanswered by the Northmen and... That's going to be an illegal cross-check, maybe a bit of frustration. 
But Garrett Thompson comes in not too bad as Johansson with a with a three and one record goals against seven point one six. Garrett Thompson comes in two and one with a seven point three three goals against average. So that's a really not giving up a whole lot. That's rather stingy, I'd say. Yeah, for a doing lacrosse a great goalie. Job. Without a doubt. Well, the Northmen have reached the average on the first goalie uh, halfway through the game, and we'll see how we fare against the next one. One for three with the man advantage are the Northmen. They go back to work with break at the top. Out there with Carrera on that right side. Accordingly and accordingly, left, right, respectively, and break down on that crease. Break, kicks it back out. Swing around, and... Took something off it, did Carrero, not sure why. Green Gales now will move it up in transition, two on two. Putting on the brakes was Tucker, and peeling out is McKinney. Lee has his stick taken away, chopped down, and the Northman now will counter the other way. Well, the last session down here, the Northman ran a really good play where the the crease guy comes up and, and picks the shooter. The shooter goes down and picks the crease, and they flash through the middle there. Let's see if they try to run that back. Van Ward at the top this time. He's got break to his left, Carrero to his right. They worked a two-man game, interchange. Good roll, kick back to the top, break. And that one went off the defender. We'll stay right here. Fresh clock for the Northmen. And if you are the Green Gales right now, Matt, you – you've really got to do something to sort of slow this roll down. Yeah, I mean, I, if I'm the coach, I wouldn't mind, you know, try to score on these short man, right? Get the ball moving, get run into open space, and hopefully get some success because something's got to give. We've got to stop this bleeding at some point would be my message to my players. Go, go, go. Accordingly, with a good duck in, wasn't able to find the mark, but a good attempt. Break. Go through the screen. That's a beauty. Not an overhand bounce, but a sidearm one equally as effective. Well, I mean, again, the, the last few goals have just been automatic goals, in my opinion. I mean, unless a goalie knows what you're going to do before you do it, I don't think he's stopping these. You watch break. Again, another nice body screen from inside the dotted line. And again, that, that extra reach with the sidearm where your eyes of your stick can see that whole far side of the net. Your eyes can't see it, but the eyes of your stick can. And makes no mistake, just pounding it on the far side off the floor. I don't know too many goalies are going to stop that. That's just a good shot. And may not have even seen it. May have just heard it behind him. So second of the game for Evan Brake. That's his 13th of the season. And again, eight unanswered. The roll continues for the Northmen. And Stokes does a good job. He's going to go in alone. Stokes, what a great save there by Thompson. So Thompson, first one he saw found the back of the net. Second one, great save. Give and go. Good defense, though, by the Northmen. As a chance for Fulbert, not able to capitalize. Green Gales, though, they'll gather it on offense. Seems like they've been down here sparingly. Christy tees it up. That's wide of the mark. Karam goes back down and a race for it. Stadnik, the winner of that loose ball. Stadnik, he'll curl back away. Finds a trailer. Beauty feed, and that's going to be off the post, so interference the call. Green Gale's now going to try to capitalize. Quick pass, and not able to connect. Ball loose, and here comes Patter. So I think that was a, what you had suggested there, Matt, and sometimes the best defense is a good offense kind of thing and going to work trying anything you can just to slow the roll here yeah it goes uh you know goes without saying yeah you know if your team has the ball the other team can't score so possession is is huge obviously and not only lacrosse but any sport well i do see the green gales they're still hustling hard to get off and certainly no Lack of effort out there by any stretch. Almost seems like the Gales need to settle themselves down here. I think they're getting a little bit frustrated, you know, obviously with, with the run that the Northmen have gone on. But, I mean, that last shot by Christy, man, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to stand in front of one of those things. That guy's got a bomb. And I think if they just loosen up and rip the ball around like they were in the first period, they might be able to claw their way back into this thing. Agree. So, another power play for the Northmen. 
And they have scored on their last two man advantages. Last time these two teams met, it was five power play goals the difference by the Northmen. And back to work here again. Accordingly, shooter, kick it, break. His shot goes off the defender. Accordingly, picks it up. And that's going to be an interference call. Greengales now are going to get a chance to try to move it up, maybe burn some clock here as we are just creeping in on the seven-minute mark. That pass floated up, and Johnston will corral that. And now Thompson will give way, and it's Carrero. So Carrero out there with Van Wart, cordingly, cordingly, and break. A familiar lineup in this power play unit. They've been successful here. And break. Changes the angle. Goes to the overhand. And that cross check will give it to the Gales. And better heads up. Good job as eyes in the back of his head. Ethan Lee. Lee going to go for a bit of a run. Works it around. That pass knocked down. Good job of keeping a stick in the passing lane by Carrero. And now going for a bit more of a run was Noah Simpson. Tucker with 26 seconds left in the man short. He's just going to keep it out there. And with an A2 lead, there's really no need for the Northmen to go chasing anyone, pressure anything. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, you're down by six here. Nothing going your way. Why not try something a little bit more than a desperation play at the end? You know, set something up where you get some cutters, get the ball moving, and possibly get yourself a good opportunity instead of just waiting for the Hail Mary at the end of the clock. Speaking of the ball moving, Northmen again in the offensive end. Another good save by Thompson. And that will be possession to the Green Gales. And now they'll have a chance here. So earlier in the, in the first period, we were talking about the Northmen maybe getting a goal to get on the board late. Boy, they sure have taken that up a notch with eight unanswered. Yeah, now it's the exact opposite. The, the Gales are searching for their first goal of the period, and they need to finish with something positive to go into the third with. Got to figure that it's almost a starting from scratch scenario for them where you got to get one before you can get two, but right now the Northmen not willing to give up even one. Yeah, just focusing on the next one would be the only thing uh, on the Green Gales bench, I would assume. Um, again, I don't know why they're not flashing to the net. They got some good size advantages uh, on offense, and I, I don't know why they're not just trying to truck their way to the net. Well, from my vantage point, they look like they got a couple of big bears out there. I agree, so I agree with that. As working it to that far side, Cole Tucker. Tucker bobbing and weaving. Seven on the shot clock, kicks it back out. Looking to duck in. Good defense there. Close it off and swing the pass over, but way too much time by Alex Hicks to get that shot off. And you got to. You just got to be able to be a little more aware of the shot clock, Matt, and know that you're going to need, when you need a quick shot, you got to take a quick shot. Yeah, I thought he was just going to on the exchange or just going to step into one. He had a good position into the middle. He could have stepped towards the middle and let one rock, but he tried to tuck it in and get something closer, uh, and it just ran out of time. He didn't have enough time to do what he wanted to do. Christie chased out. They've done a good job on Carson Christie the team's leading scorer as they have held him to just one goal here and the team's only got two and with over three and a half to go they're trying not to be stuck on two for an entire period good save there made easy by Johnston and now the Northmen will work it up into the offensive end Devins Wrong stick side, so he'll go for a bit of a run, kick it out. He'll continue on to the bench accordingly now. We'll size things up, swing it around to the top. Van Wart, kick it over. They'll go to work to Carrera on that right side. Back to the left, accordingly. Shot clock at four. Quick shot on the money, and that slides into the short, short, short side. 
Well, this is a broken play on the strong side here. The strong side's on the three side, and you're going to see an exchange come through to 20. 20's going to get it right down to the crease, and he's going to run his guy. The middle guy's going to come through and run his guy through, so 20's open in front. It's not there accordingly. Really smart and doesn't force it and just sneaks one under the armpit of the Gales goaltender to make this a 9-2 game with 3.07 left. Second of the game for Cade Cordingly. His seventh goal of the season, and I didn't think he had a whole lot of room there to work with, but he saw something that we didn't, and it found its way over the goal line. So a 9-0 run for the Northmen. They are in complete control here on this offensive explosion. Give a go off the pipe. So something positive for the Green Gales, but just not able to pocket one. Here in this period, Christie swings it around. Good skip. Another good shot. Johnson steers that aside. So that was the best looking offense we've seen from the Green Gales this period. It resulted in two shots, but Johnston with two good saves. And a post to help him out as well. Well, a goalie's best friend, mm -hmm. Z, with an S, of course. <laughs> Throw that crossbar in there, too, and it's a threesome. As Green Gales come away. Chance here, Christie. And he'll think better of it. Patter sizing him up on him tight. They've been on Christie tight this entire game. Dump off. Quick shot. That's wide of the mark. Good job, Christie now with six on the shot clock. Gonna have to make a move, create his own shot. Christie, chase back out. He'll dump it. Good job by the Northmen extending their defense. And now they look back up at the floor. One, two, back of the net. That's the way the game's played. Leighton Cook, second of the game. Well, again, the Northern defense just doing a great job. The, the Gales just have nothing going offensively. And again, we get the ball. It's a quick look up floor and a quick transition like the Northern were looking for all night. And uh, it's a quick two pass to the Northern player. And again, coming across that crease, it's so hard for the goalie to get over there if you can make a hard move and just jam that far crease. Really good job of the Northman. And now they are in double digits in the second period. Ball moves faster than any feet. And the Northman with a an explosion here and going for a run now is Thompson. Reverses his direction. And does a good job to get past the defender. He'll set things up in the offensive end now. And I tell you, the Green Gales are going to be glad to see this period go. I he, would imagine, yeah. Looking to regroup and get something out of this coming into the third. Last time these two teams met, it was a 10-9 win for the Northmen in a tight game. These two teams coming off games against Brampton where... The Northmen, 59 winners over Brampton. And the Green Gales actually played to a 9-9 tie in overtime. Just makes no sense to me that how overtime could end in a tie. Listen, I, you, you, you're already you're not making friends. You already got it with the coach. Now you're trying to get into it with the old. I'm just trying to stay out of it. All Come right? on, man. Okay. Next goal wins. Don't it's try overtime. Don't bring me down, Matt. Matt, yeah. don't try to take the Don't put the anchor on me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, good cross check there as gear. It's funny when you see a smaller guy with a good cross check on a bigger guy. It has that same effect. Green Gales now looking for something. Ten seconds left in the period. See if they go for one. Five. And going to take that, and that's wide of the mark, and that's going to really signify the entire period for the Green Gales. An explosion by the Northmen. They're up 10-2. We've played two. We'll be back with the third after this.
Welcome back as we are locked and loaded for third period action. The Red Hot Northmen have reeled off 10 straight. They lead this one by eight, 10 to two. And boy, Matt, we were talking in the intermission about being a tale of two teams and Johnston coming up big again. And what we saw in the first definitely wasn't what we saw in the second. No, no, the, it seemed that the, uh, the skills were a bit different. I mean, Northman kind of had struggled catching and throwing and, and you know ran the floor really well but uh, just weren't the finer points weren't uh, weren't clicking and then they came out in the second period and man it just reversed and uh, I think you got to give the MVP of the second period to Johnson here in net for Orangeville he made every single stop and allowed these guys to go on a nine nothing run in the second period I'd have to agree with you there and great job by accordingly as he back checks all the way back to lay the hammer down on Owen Taylor Green Gales though Regain and a good job to keep that ball in play by McNutt. They'll swing around looking for a cutter in the middle, but wrong stick side. That's going to be a penalty for an illegal cross check and that shot wide of the mark. So the Green Gales will start this period off with a power play, and I'd say it's a pretty important one if they want to get back in this game. For sure, they're going to look to score on this. Uh hopefully quickly if, if I'm their bench boss here. But I don't know, if I'm the coach of the Gales, I'm pretty happy with this first minute and seven seconds that the Gales have come out. They've worked hard. They've gone real hard to the net. They're throwing their body and their weight around from their bigger guys. And we'll see if this translates to a goal here for their power play. We'll see here if Carson Christie can get on track as he'll be the facilitator at the top, working that around. And he's got with him Alex Hicks on that shooter spot interchange, skipping. I know that's a design play, that's clear, but got to know that guy's got to be open. Good skip pass, returned, left side, kick it back out, Tucker, that shot, easy save, and Johnston's made it look easy as he's been in the right place for each and every shot here since giving up those two goals in the first. Yeah, since those two goals, he's made every stop he should make, and he's probably made a few that he shouldn't have made, so can't ask much more from your goaltender when he does that. Gear. He's going to work to burn some clock here. Minute 15 to go in a man short. He's going to go for a bit of a run. Take it around and around with dying seconds three. Flip it in the corner. Good job by Gear. And the Green Gales now will get a chance here with a minute left in the power play. Tucker. He'll kick it back out. Christie fakes that, kicks it over to the right side. That side arm is wide of the mark. Going to go for a bit of a run. Good job, Christie, to slow it down. But eight on the shot clock. Going to have to go to work right now. The Green Gales stepping into one. And boy, did he ever. Cole Tucker finds the back of the net for the first time. That puts an end to the Northman run. Well, the Gale power play goes up. They see an odd man here, and, and you look at the Gale player in the middle just tied right up with them, and, and, and the Orangeville defender gets way out, and it's a shot from way out, but I think uh, the Orangeville goalie thought he was going far side when he brought it back short side, and what a howitzer of a shot that was to get the Gales back in the good. Jeez. That shot was, was a rocket to say the least, and... First goal in over a period for the Green Gales, and they cut the deficit now to 10-3, and that's what you asked for, Matt. You, you got to show a little. You got to get one before you can get two. Absolutely. I mean, you, you can't do anything more than come out on this third period and just try to play your game the best you can. You understand the, the situation, but can you dig yourself out of this as much as you can for hopefully something in the future to lean on when you're in trouble again? Great pass from accordingly, but Kreller wasn't able to handle it. And now Christie ducks by a defender, has it taken away. And good battle by accordingly. He fishes that ball out of there. Had it, lost it, and he's going to regain it again, but get chased and hounded by Drimmy. And the Northmen, they get together and collectively come away with that loose ball good job by the three to get their team possession now break draws a crowd dump off had to flip a little late accordingly goes airborne what a great save there by Thompson so Garrett Thompson 
Does a good job doing the matrix and making that save. And the Green Gales now stop the bleeding on one end, trying to add something here. Trying to close the gap. Trailing by seven. Christie, 10 on the shot clock. Dumps it down low. Great swim move and a beauty finish. So boy, a little life, Alex Hicks. Gives his team a little spark. Well, just what the doctor ordered here for the Gales. They've come out real strong. Their bigger guys are taking it to the net on the smaller Northman defense, and here's no exception. Just leans on him, leans on him. Little swim move there, real nice, and just a hard far side bouncer to get these Gales rolling. And now, only a gap of six, and over 15 minutes left in the third. I don't know, Michael Phelps, too. That was a great move, and quick finish. By Hicks, off the draw. Green Gale showing some life, and that's mm. going to be an interference call. So possession now to the Green Gale, so can just sense a bit of the momentum shifting to the visitors right now. For, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, that energy goes right to your legs. You start feeling like, hey, maybe we're in this. We're not far out. And then you start thinking about what a story it would be to claw back from such a deficit, right? And So our, all their minds are in the right places. Hopefully Orangeville can just stay calm, cool, and collected and continue to play their game. It's, it's important for them not to change what they're doing. Good job to get on that, but wasn't able to do anything with it, McNutt, except give it back to the Northmen. So I think... The Northmen now need need a little something themselves just to steady the ship. Accordingly, he'll kick it across. Cook finds break, break, trying to duck in. Good defense and a good strip there. So some good hands by Fobert, who has had himself a solid game despite the score. And they'll move it up into the offensive end. Robbie McGraney. And McGraney scores! So oh, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Far from done here, deficit cut in half now, 10-5. Well, Robbie McGrain just gets the ball wide here. He sits low, little bounce pass back up, and he gets it right back, and he sees a little gap here, a little bit of a body screen by the Northland defender, and again, I believe that snuck in short side. And look at, look at, the Gales, only about a minute later, have cut the lead again to five. So Johnston goes for a water break, and he'll regroup. Got a game here with 14 and a half, so plenty of time to close the gap. Green Gales, you can tell they're feeling it now. Three unanswered to get back in this one. Yeah, just a whole different uh, posture on the, on the Gales bench here right now after... Uh, scoring the last three goals in a row. Taylor gets it over. Christie dumps it in the middle, and they haven't gotten anything from their main guy. Good skip pass, but that goes through a crowd. And not able to haul it in was Cole Tucker. Green Gale's got to hurry. That's right on. And Johnston now with an outlet. Floats one up, and it's Stokes. Stokes going to beat a man, and he'll think better of it. Wrong stick side. And he'll pull it right out, retreat. And the offense now, the Northmen. Got to try to run their offensive set here, maybe get a good look, get something good, maybe test Thompson. And that backhander wide of the mark. No reset, five and a shot clock. Carrero is going to have to let it go. Does, and he finds the mark. So a tough, tough screenshot. And if you're cheering for the Northmen, you're happy. If you're on the Green Gale side, not so much. Well, a great back cut here and backhand by the Northman player. We get an offensive rebound. We're just kind of backtracking here, looking to change, shooting around a screen from way out. And it, I wonder if the, the defender walking in front of his own goalie there maybe screened him for a moment. But what a backbreaker after a great start by the Gales for that one to go in. For sure, and... Second of the game for Carrero. His 19th of the season and a chance here. Thompson and a good save by Thompson. No relation, of course. Calling the shooter, Garrett, the goaltender. And the Green Gales now back to work on offense. 11-5. That pass behind and now a chance in transition is Devins. 
Devins puts on the brakes. Wrong stick side. He's going to go for a bit of a run. Good decision. Waiting for a trailer. Kicks it back out. Getting a running start and able to walk right in. And I'm not quite sure how close Connor Castigan needs to be. I mean, he could have proposed. That's how <laughs> close he was inside that crease to, to the netminder. And a chance. That one's aired up and into the netting. Yeah, it's almost like Costigan glitched out there for a second. <laughs> kept faking his way into the corner. I'm not too sure what was going there, but... Obviously, it's a lot different from the players' eyes when they're in there in the mix. That is such a nice way to put it, I tell you, because like, we're well said. <laughs> I'm not sure when you're going to shoot. You hit the dot. It's a half circle ages ago. In tight. It's Evan Brake. So putting a break on that momentum and getting it back. Big goal, 12-5. Well, right after Orangeville scored that first goal to stop the bleeding, they, they've had chance after chance after chance, and it's just a great roll underneath by Brake, and again comes across and throws it far side. I think the goalie wanted that one back. Well, I tell you, you give Evan Brake that kind of proximity to shoot the ball, and he's probably going to bury that more than two-thirds of the time. So Yeah, and he loves to reach around too, so um, goalies might want to take note of that moving forward. Third of the game for Brake. He's got 14 goals on the season. And Van Wart. Van Wart's been quiet in this game. And Carrero. And a delayed penalty coming to the Green Gales. Courtney, a good job to corral that off the boards. Six on the shot clock. His shot wide of the mark. And Green Gales will head right back to the penalty box. And for the I was watching the ball on the close side, so I didn't see what happened here. And top of your screen. Oh, yeah, cross check right across the chin or, or the front of the, the neck there. And it looks like the Gales player maybe didn't mean to do it. Well, maybe I think throw some air quotes on that. <laughs> oh, oh, now you're tough. <laughs> what, now you're tough? One minute you're nice, now you're tough? <laughs> I thought it was good sportsmanship. I don't think he meant the crack of one there. I think he definitely meant the cracking one, just not sure. there. Yeah, absolutely. So, power play to work here for the Northmen accordingly. And that box is really in there tight, as you can see. And a sidearm, good save. Brake had it. And accordingly will come away with a fresh 30 here for the Northmen. Carrero. Accordingly shot wide of the mark. Rebound, break, break shot. Steered aside by Thompson. Cordingly picks that up. And just in case you don't know, two Cordingleys on the floor, so it's not one Cordingly tracking down everything here. As good no look pass and great save by Thompson. Trying to smother it. Can't kick back out. Cordingly swing, break, kick. Cordingly slow down. Carrero. Plenty of time. Break. Overhand. Good shoulder save there by Thompson. That goes up out of play. Press 30 with a minute left in the power play for the Northmen. Yeah, the Northmen have had possession this entire penalty kill. It's got to be getting exhausting for the Green Gales defenders. Accordingly shot, and looked like a defender may have deflected that just a bit. Carrero comes away with it. 15 on a shot clock. Accordingly missed that. That'll go the length of the floor. And... Johnston with a pass. They're going to have to move it up three on the shot clock. And that shot just wide. So with 30 seconds left in the man short, the Green Gales showed some life early in the period. Still have time now to go back to work if they can get something going here. Hicks looking for a cutter in Drimmy. Not able to connect. And now McNutt. McNutt ducks around one. Skip it across. Six on the shot clock. Back to back skips. Good running shot from Jimmy, but right on. Easy save for Johnston. And now both teams back to full strength. Break. And Tried to bob and weave and forgot to bob. Uh, does a good job, though, to track it back. No reset. 
with just three on the shot clock. He puts that in the gondola, and <laughs> possession will go the other way to the Green Gales. Yeah, it looks like both teams have slowed down their transition quite a bit. I don't know if all that transition in the in the second period gassed everyone, but it seems like the Northern are really, you know, pretty comfortable just setting up their offense and trying to get looks five on five. Be interesting to see if the Green Gales have another run left in them. As coming around and really letting that one rip was Cole Tucker. Johnston again making the saves he should. And the McMaster Northman now back to work on O. Cade Cordingly has got two tonight in tight. Good pass to Costigan. Two hands on there and possession to the Green Gales. Tucker swings it across. McNutt, McNutt tees it up and easy save there for Johnston. And now looking to capitalize in transition are the Northmen, but again, time on their side right now with just over eight minutes to go. Leading this one by seven. Trying to filter his way through was accordingly. Had it knocked away. And now legging it over the timeline is Fobert. See a bit of a different look from the Northman defense today. They they used to jam in a, a really tight zone, but it looks like they're moved to more of a man-on-man -man here uh, in the third. Well, we were talking about how effective they've been defensively on Carson Christie. They've done a good job pushing him further away from that dotted half circle, making it difficult for him to get his shot off. And that may be a result of spreading out that man-to-man -man defense just a little bit more. Yeah, when you have a threat uh, of someone who can shoot like Christy can, uh, you definitely have to get out a lot further than you normally would on shooters just because he's so fine at his shot. Um, you want to help out your goalie by getting hands on him and sticks in his hands, uh, even, even you know, sometimes 10, 15 feet outside the dotted line. Accordingly. Swings it around accordingly. Swims his way past the defender. Ducks it down low and tight, and that shot never found its way through, although maybe it did because it's a reset. And accordingly will set it up. And accordingly sniffed that corner and took a bite. Well, it's always good when you score a goal, but uh, if I'm the coach here, I'm not sure if I like that shot too much. We just got an offensive rebound. I mean, the shot's there, but it's still pretty far outside. Um, he's got a little cushion here. He gets in almost to the dotted line, puts it in. Great shot, don't get me wrong. But with uh, about, what was it, about 24 seconds on the shot clock there, I think we might want to just squeeze that in the situation that we're in. But great shot nonetheless by the young coordinator. That's the no, 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 yay. One, <laughs> right, of right, right. I tell you, and his dad never had a shot like that either. <laughs> That's for sure. His dad had to keep it in tight, right, where it was close. Troy's going to have to find a new place to sit. He's just getting berated He loves up here. it. Are you kidding? He loves it. Hey. Now that he's an Orangeville native. Six forty to go here, third period, and the Northmen in complete control now. They've weathered the storm, and it looks like they're going to try to put it in cruise mode at the very least. And this is one of those situations now, Matt, you're up big, so you want to stay away from the injuries and the suspensions. Right, and I think the best way to do that is just play your game. I mean, you don't have to you know, lay back. You don't have to push forward. You just have to play within yourself, stick to the game plan, and business as usual. And I think uh, a lot of teams make the mistake of, either pulling out, softening up, or even hardening down, and, and that's when you get into trouble when you get away from the plan. Well, it's funny you say that because I know you've spent time behind the, the bench as well, and I'm sure in your coaching days, at no point in time has anything you've told your players to do, they would do it every single time. No, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely well, we, not. We know, we know that. That would be beauty scenario if that was the case, but... You know, you could you could teach it, but they got to do it. Well, there's a reason why Coach Brandon Sanderson doesn't have much hair left on his head. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, sorry, I, Looney. Well, no offense, I don't keep a whole lot either. So, <laughs> in his defense, right? <laughs> Northman now will flip in its gear. 
So a chance here in these kind of games, Matt, where you have a little bit of leeway, do you get some other guys out there to give them a chance to maybe sharpen up their offensive skills, some of the guys that are a little more defensive-oriented? Well, I know when it gets to this, you've played a really good game, uh, obviously strong second period, and, and the third, like you mentioned before, you weather a storm, and now you're back on top here, very comfortable. I was always key on, like, you know, who doesn't have a point? Who doesn't have a goal? Maybe we look for him or we try to get him an extra couple of shifts. Someone who maybe gets shortened on the bench a little bit, gets a little bit more playing opportunity in these situations. Well, those kind of things, those little bits of confidence go a long way. Good for team stuff too, uh, right? 100% for sure. And those things are big as we'll have a penalty here. And Well, Dylan Cordenley looked like he was in the WWE there for a second, put a Big old headlock on the Gales player. We should see it here shortly. As you can see, I'll just come into your screen right here. Oh, yeah, look at the old DDT getting ready to go there. Well, I mean, you can't do I, that. It was, it was a subtle headlock, at least. Uh, at least <laughs> that was the case. It wasn't <laughs> tried to hide it a little there, but. So the Gales back, Green Gales back to work, another power play. They are two for six, I believe, and Christie again at the top. Out there working with Hicks on that right side. Christie, and that one goes off the helmet. So that's really only the second really good shot we've seen Christie take here. Both and coming from the top of the power play where he's got time and space, right? Two men on the interchange, slide back over on the run, and too much bounce to the ounce there from Cole Tucker. And they're going to say that it somehow went off a Northman defender and out, or maybe it caught, maybe it caught the goaltender, Johnston. No look, skip, doesn't work. Back to the left shooter, kick it to the top, Christie. And a chance to walk right in. Johnston just with a left pad save, steered that one aside easy. Ball loose. Picked up Green Gales, fresh clock. Good work by Christie. Minute left now in the power play. So you know, Matt, that these two teams are going to see each other again a couple more times. And you got to figure, even with games like this, there's, there's a lot of things you should work on even at this time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's always ways to improve no matter how well or how poorly you play. Uh, it seems to be magnified, obviously, with the poor efforts. But um, I'm sure both teams will be taking notes, little subtleties, little guys they want to work on. I'm sure the North will be happy with their effort today on keeping guys to the outside and shooting and, and capitalizing on their chances. And the Gales will have to go back to the drawing board and how to play these North the next time they see them. Be interesting to see what adjustments they make. Clearly, after the last game, the Northmen have made some adjustments never mind he, after the first period adjustments were made by the Northmen and little mix up there as you saw Zach Pfeiffer and the big man Preston Gear get tangled of course Zach Pfeiffer one of the Pfeiffer brothers one of the Fife dogs of course an outstanding lacrosse family the brothers at all different levels making their presence felt. Good backhand pass. That one goes off the crossbar. So a golden opportunity there for Hicks. Wasn't able to capitalize. He's got one of the team's five in this game. This has been a very long possession for the Gales. They've had many offensive rebounds, many out-of-bounds calls go their way. So defensemen have to be pretty tired if they're in the white shirt. Bounce back out, looking for an opening, ducking in, swinging that over, taking a late hit. But a good job, man. Trying to fake the pass, lean in, good backhand pass, beat. What a save by Johnston. Point blank, robs Hicks. And the Northman now, break, scoops it up. But again, we're under the two minute warning. And really no need for the Northman to score anymore as they'll kick it back out. Kreller, he's got a goal here and good piece of officiating as Preston Gear has mixed it up a couple times in this shift. So good job to 
sort of nipped that right in the bud. Well, I don't know what was going on there between him and 24 for the Gales, but uh, maybe he said something about his red gloves that maybe made him a little bit mad, and he took a, <laughs> took a well, liberty here well, with listen, the score I, difference. Well, listen, I know you're mad about those red gloves. You made that perfectly clear, okay? <laughs> Come on, man. How, how are you about Stokes' red shoes? Are you okay with the red shoes? <sighs> I don't like them. Okay. But they're more acceptable than the gloves that okay. look different from everyone else on the team. I mean, so, the Cordingley so, brothers have some interesting shoes as well. Oh yeah, so I mean, there's a bit of a mix out there. Color combo. When you're the lone dude with white and red gloves on an all-black glove team, it's it's <laughs> tough. It's tough sailing. <laughs> I got you. I got you. That shot blocked, four in the shot clock. Good save, Johnston. He has been the man here in this game as we inch toward the final minute here in regulation. Green Gales, they want the calls right to the end. And that's the thing about lacrosse. You battle till the final buzzer goes as we are into the final minute. Well, it's important for coaches to keep on their game plan, too, in games like these, and that's exactly what the Gales coach is doing, like you said, right till the end, that final buzzer. So you want your team to play hard. You want them to play smart. And, and this is where you have to be careful as officials. Things start to get a little heated. And it doesn't take much in a game like this. And Right, you know. and I didn't see the whole thing transpire there, but I don't know why Leighton Cook decides to engage here. It looks like the Gales are are just happy to sit back and let the clock run out and he's just in there getting his nose dirty <laughs> into the guys wow. with the 13-5 lead and 38 seconds left and that'll be it for him for the night. Well, you know, sometimes coach tells the players to do something and they just do their own thing, Matt. You know? Yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> it sure it's very, is. very frustrating. It, sure it can is. be as a coach. <laughs> But again, you, again, like we said, you know, it's been a great game for the North and overall here tonight, and that's one of the things that the coach and staff can look at to improve next game. There's always a lesson to be learned, no matter what the score. Northmen now are just going to kill this final 30 seconds here, and they're going to come away with a big win. So another W for the Northmen. They are going to improve their record now to a division leading eight and two in the southeast. The Green Gales are going to fall to five, three, and one. And that will do it. Buzzer goes. And quickly, Matt, you and your final thoughts before we wrap her up. Uh, I mean, since I started calling these games, the Northern have been rolling in here. Uh, so I don't know if it's me or them or what. No, just kidding. No, I think it's I think it's a great response. I don't think the Northern had what it took in the first period to get going. But like I said, they did run the floor well. They did have good energy. Second period belonged to uh, the Northern goalie for sure. And and again, I love that they come out. You know, the Gales threw everything they had them in the first five minutes or so. Northman cool, calm, and collected, did their job, and they came out with a big victory here, a convincing victory, 13-5. 13-5 the final, as that will do it for us here at the Elder Street Recreational Complex. On behalf of my partner, Matt Marshadin, the entire JVI crew, of course, I'm Lance Wynn. We will see you next time.
Having issues getting your products on time and seeing your prices skyrocket? Ontario Packaging and Distribution Centers is here to help. Ontario Packaging is helping Dufferin businesses save time and money with over 2 million products available. Ontario's one-stop shop for everything you need to run a business, warehouse, or restaurant here in Dufferin. Want to put your company logo on your boxes, tapes, or poly bags? Just give them a call. From packaging and shipping supplies, boxes to bubble wrap, to janitorial, and their new full apparel catalog, OPC really has it all. Over 2 million products in stock. See the difference hometown shopping makes at Ontario Packaging Centres. Supporting our local community from 70 Centennial Road, Unit 3, Orangeville. 